Okay, so first of all, thank you for joining us today. So um, obviously this is a little bit different to coming into college, um, but we just want to ensure that you know everything about your chosen course and what college um, has to offer, um, which is why we've put on the virtual event. So I'm just going to start with a short presentation and um, general college information from our side of things. After I've done that, I'll pass over to David and Jim. So they are the tutors for art and design and they're going to give you some information about the courses and that sort of thing. Um, first of all, this will be no longer than 30 minutes, so you won't be on um, for too long. You won't be on camera at all. You won't have access to a mic. And um, so we can't hear or see you as students. If you do have any questions throughout to so whether that's something you want to ask now or once you've seen the presentation, if there's anything that comes up that you're not sure on, pop a question in the chat facility. I will keep tabs on that and I'll pass any questions over to David or Jim. Um, so just let me share my screen. I'm just going to show you a short presentation and we'll go from there. Okay, so hopefully you can all see that. Can you, David, can you and Jim see that? Yeah, yeah. I can see yeah. that. Um, yes. Okay, fab. So first of all, welcome to our virtual open event um, for St. Helens College. Um, so applications are still open. So if you've got an interest in art and design, but you've not yet applied, or um, you've applied for a different course, changed your mind, and you want to do art and design or anything like that, applications are still open and you can apply through our website. And um, so that's just on the website link is just there. And um, that's what you just need to pop in and do your application online. Um, alternatively, if you've applied and you've changed your mind on a course, there'll be an email for our admissions team at the end of this um, presentation. So that's another useful um, thing for you to just jot down in case you do need to email if you've got any questions over your application or anything like that. Um, so although you are on today for art and design, this is just a range of courses that we do offer at college. Um, so there's, we offer things from um, A-levels to vocational and B-tech courses through to apprenticeships um, in all of these areas that we've got on the screen now. Um, so that was just something, a little bit of information for you guys. Um, okay, so benefits of being a student. So at college, we do offer things like a free breakfast. So you've got to be in on time. Be in before quarter to nine, um, ready to start the day for your course, um, you will get a free breakfast. Um, we also offer things like a free college bus pass. Um, so we have a free college bus that runs, but we also offer bus passes for Arriva. So if you're not on our free route, you will get a bus pass. Um, we have Microsoft Office 365 package. So that's useful for you to download on your computer at home um, for free because you are a student with us, that will help you obviously with things like coursework or anything like that. Um, student discounts, so as a student anywhere you will get student discounts. Um, due to, um, down to your financial circumstances and things like that, you could be entitled to a bursary, but that is um, quite, there's, there's some things that you have to hit to get that. So that's something that you'd have to look at at enrolment stage. Not everybody is entitled to a bursary, unfortunately, but that is something that you may be entitled to. Um, again, free college lunch and assistance for buying um, uniforms and that sort of thing. Again, down to financial circumstances, so different for everybody, but that is also something that you could be entitled to as a student with us. Okay, so we have a really good safeguarding and wellbeing team at college. Um, so they're there for a range of support, so whether that's for things um, that you're struggling with, whether it's mental health or anything like that, or whether it's just somebody to talk to, you're feeling really stressed out or anything along those lines. We have a team that are dedicated to supporting our students. Um, so that's all of the team on, on the screen at the moment. Um, we also have learner support as well. So if there's anything that you um, struggle with, so let's say, for example, dyslexia or anything, like that and you struggle with your written work and um, we have learner support there so we have people who can support you in those things so you would need to just declare those at enrollment if you do have any um additional needs or anything like that if you let us know we can help you as best as we can 
Um, so that's the end of it with me, really. So there's just our social media accounts. Um, if you're not following us, please give us a follow. Everything is up to date on there. So even things like, um, obviously, communications over coronavirus and all of the things that are going on at the moment, everything is updated on our website um, and on our social media channels. So that's useful to give those a follow. Um, and again, I mentioned earlier the admissions um, email. So if you've not yet... Um, if you've put your application and you've changed your mind or anything like that, you can drop us an email at admissions. Um, also, the staff are currently doing um, interviews for those that have not had their interview yet. Um, obviously, we've got a lot of applications, so a lot of interviews to get through. Um, so it could take a couple of weeks to get to get to you but if you've not had your phone interview through by the end of next week if you drop admissions an email they can just make our team aware that you that you've not been contacted yet okay so like i say that's the end of it from me i'm just going to stop sharing my screen i'm just going to pass over now to david and jim they'll take it between themselves and um, to to do a bit of a presentation for you and explain all about our courses and things like that and um, so i'm just going to pass over now i'm just going to mute myself for now and um, but I, I, as i said any any questions just pop it in the chat facility and i can pass them over to david and jim okay thanks right so flourish i'm Suzanne foster leader of the floristry program um as part of the course, you'll be studying a level two diploma in floristry. That insists, consists of 10 units that you will have to complete throughout the year. Each one is credit based and each one is marked uh, past merit and distinction. The units that you'll be covering will be an art and design unit, which looks at the colour wheel, um, different um, days in the calendar for the floristry like Easter, Christmas, Halloween, anything that we can celebrate where flowers are actually needed. We look at different um, cultures in floristry, um, what arrangements they'll need for different countries because um, they like specific colours, flowers, designs. So we'll be looking into that and also into the art and design and the um, elements and principles of design of how to construct the designs that you will be making. Unit 202 is identify, check and monitor the quality of incoming materials. That is, you will be, we have a delivery of flowers on a Monday where you'll be learning all the cut flower names, the botanical names, the common names and how to look after them. You'll also be looking at how to cost the flowers that they come in from the wholesale price through to the, what you're going to be selling them at, at the retail price. Assessment for this is actually the conditioning and the identification of the cut flowers. Um, and that is the assessment for that. So that one's, you'll be working on assessments throughout that unit. Unit 203 is a little bit similar to the cut flower one, except this is plants. So it's pot plants and you'll be learning different names of pot plants using botanical names. You will be looking at what conditions the plants need so that you can put the same plants that like the same environment and atmosphere and water together. Um, and then we come on to the practical units. So you've got four practical units here now. You've got tide designs, funeral designs, arrangements and wedding designs. Each one is, um, a, is it, the, the basis of each unit is set out exactly the same, such as the paperwork and the knowledge. Um, for the hand tied unit, you've probably got 15 different designs to construct for that unit, um, which you'll construct in class. As you're in class, um, the tutor will be showing you how to make that design, where you'll be taking notes of how to make that. You will be taking a photograph, you're going to sketch the design, you've got to cost it, evaluate it. And we've got to look at the suitability, care and storage and transportation for that design. So all that is needed to be put into your assignment. The end assignment for these units, for all four of the practicals, are all set out the same. You have a task A, which wants you to have five designs that you've already covered in class with all that information that I've just listed. Plus also, additionally, you've got four assessment pieces which are done in class. Um, and these are timed and depending on how, how long it takes, as long as you have covered all the mandatory points in that design, then you'll get a pass. The more points you get, obviously it'd be a merit or a distinction. Then from all that, you're just gonna produce a portfolio to hand in for marking. 
the funeral one is one of the biggest units. There's probably about um, 18 to 20 pieces in that funeral unit that you've got to cover. Again, the same, um, same way that we do it is uh, demonstrations. You write everything down that you've learned and how to construct it. The arrangement unit is a smaller unit again. So this is about 15 designs. And again, those that unit is set out the same. You've got your task A's and you've got your four assessment pieces. Then the next one, weddings, well, that is another big one. Um, and that's probably about 18 to 20 pieces, if not more. And again, taking all the notes of when we demonstrate and putting it all together. So you're ending up with different portfolios. We usually start with the hand tied and the arrangement unit, which will be done from September up till Christmas. Um, so those two will be done before we finish for the break at Christmas. And then you'll be starting your funeral and your wedding. Along these on the other days that you'll be in, you'll be looking at display of floristry goods, which you'll be put into groups, come up with themes for uh, displaying goods. So like a Christmas window, Valentine's, Easter, any sort of function that we can use in floristry and you're going to be in the group, come up with ideas and designs to put in a window display. And then as in your group, you're going to set it up as well. So you're assessed as really as you're going along from the start of planning your window to the end of when it's finished and taking it down. Unit 209 is working in the industry. In this, we look at health and safety, risk assessments, um, accident reporting. Um, we look at doing a CV, letter of application, um, looking at making posters, flyers, um, spreadsheets to show different workings out for your flowers. Now, also with this 209, you've got a mandatory work placement to do, so which is 40 hours. So it's a minimum of 40 hours you've got to do throughout the year. And that can be done either each week or in blocks. Um, now, a lot of our students do it each week, probably from half term onwards, October half term, um, where they might just do four or five hours a week and just build up from that. <clears throat> Some of the students just carry on. Once they've done the 40 hours, um, they carry on and do the full year just to get the experience and the knowledge of working in a natural florist. A lot of the florists that's on the placement have actually been taken on part time as well and carry on working. And a lot of the florists take them on as well over the busy periods such as Christmas and Valentine's Day and Mother's Day. So they get a wide range of different um, events that's going on in the year. So you could be in the, in the shop when it's quiet, but then you could be in when it's very, very busy. And the last unit 210 is function decorating which is um, looking at pew ends, cake tops, um, function arrangements for tables, for buffet arrangements and themed arrangements. Um, and again, with that one, you've just got four assessments to do. As part of your course um, on the study programme for the 16 to 18s, um, you will be to do maths and English, again, dependent on what your results will going to be when you get those. You'll do your main vocational programme, which will be the floristry. You'll be expected to at attend a tutorial, um, a tutorial hour, which again is mandatory. The work experience, um, we already do that. So you'll be doing that as part of your vocational programme. And there's also enrichment opportunities. So we know roughly you may be in college probably about three days a week at this moment, depending on where the different classes come in. Um, and as a college, we expect 100% attendance to your sessions. Um, during the time at college, you'll be developing your knowledge, skills and attitudes. Um, attendance is 100%. If you are not going to be attending, we need to let the tutor know by email or through the college absence line. Um, if attendance falls, then you will be, uh, we will have to get in touch with you or your parents to see why you were not attending. We have to keep on top of this attendance so that you don't miss too much of your course and fall behind. The next few slides now are bits of the, of the units that you'll be covering. So you've got the art and design unit. So there's some colors like color wheels. They're all painted. You've got sketching to do. There's like culture on that one, so that's 201. The assignment for that is more of an art folder that you'll be putting together. Conditioning, 
identifying the different cut flowers by the genus, species and varieties. Your pot plants, learning to find pot plants that fit into different settings at the whole. Different hand tides for different events. Funeral work, everything from loose reeds, crosses to the based crosses, hearts, um, double ended sprays for coffins and things like that. Different styles of arrangements, modern ones, traditional ones that can do for Christmas candle arrangements. Uh, wedding work, everything from buttonholes, corsages, um, hand tides, all traditional, but also we'll do modern designs as well into that unit. Display, um, you will come up with displays, um, sketches, ideas, and then putting the actual design together. And then a workplace, working in the industry. As part at the top of this, you can see that there's someone's done a workplace diary. So that's part of the assignment for your work placement is to do, is to write a diary of what you're actually doing while you're in the placement along with any pictures of designs that you've done or anything you want to add to it. And then in the corner, there's like different labels that people have made. And then finally, function decorating. Um, again, looking at different things in different settings, churches and hotels, receptions. Um, and as I said earlier, 40 hours in the placement, um, where you'll generate evidence for tasks for your 209 uh, working in the industry unit, where at the end of your placement, you will get a re you've got to get a report filled in by your employer to say that you've done it. And then again, if like uh, Linda said, you can get in contact with us through the different websites or emails. And again, I'm sure my email will be coming up at the end if you need any more information. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so right. Um, horticulture. Sue's covered some of the stuff there um, that um, is a general thing. So I'm going to just be a bit more specific to, to horticulture. Um, just cut this up. Okay. Um, so horticulture in general, my name's Rob Hogan. I teach the college-based students. Two of my colleagues who are not here, Darren Arrowsmith and Carl Appleton, deliver the same qualifications, but usually in, in off-site settings. So that tends to be adults rather than 16 to 18s. Um, I'll just scroll through here. So in terms of the courses that we've got, a lot will depend um, what, what your interest is. They're all general courses, so like an introduction, but we do have what we call practical horticultural skills and then work-based horticulture. The topics that you study will be the same. You may well be in the same class as people on different programs, but the differences come whereby the assignments and the written work that you have to do uh, goes up in degrees of difficulty according to which level you're doing. So let's see what we've got. Um, Linda's already mentioned a lot of that there in the introduction, so I won't go over and over again through that, the same thing, same with Sue. Uh, let's get to the actual qualifications. So the first one there you can see is the Diploma in Practical Heart Skills Level 1. Generally suitable for school leavers or those with no previous gardening skills. And also really, depending on how you've done at school, if you've not done as well as you would wanted to do, and obviously you've not had a chance to do exams, then maybe the level one would be suitable for you. Um, the emphasis is on practical skills. There is only a really small amount of portfolio written work in terms of what you're actually tested on. It's less than less than 5% of the whole qualification. Although, like I said previously, you'd be working generally within a class of people who are studying at high levels. So you'd still be expected to take part in the class and submit work. It's just that the uh, written work for the qualification is only uh, a little small amount. Okay, 
So the practical skills consist of some mandatory modules, uh, which involves preparing the ground for sowing and planting, establishing container grown plants outdoors, uh, prepare the soil and apply mulch, a mulch being sort of like a, a compost or bark chippings, something that you place over the surface of the soil to prevent weeds. And then general watering activities, both on indoor plants, uh, container grown plants and outdoor grown plants as well. Most of the written work is attached to those mandatory units in terms of a series of short answer questions based on what we would study in class and generally can be answered usually either as short answers or as multiple choice questions as well. <clears throat> Excuse me. There are a large number of optional units and if you are doing the diploma, your programme will be based over two days. Yeah? Generally, one of those days would be practical initially and one would be classroom based. But as the year progresses, so as you start in September, it's probably 50%, 50% in the classroom, 50% outside. As we get into the spring months, so from March onwards, March, April, May, June, then hopefully by then most of the written work has been completed. And obviously that's when the gardening season really kicks in, in sort of late March, early April. There'll be a lot more to do. Uh, so the, the qualification would then focus on the practical side of things two days a week so, and that would regardless of who's in the class it would still be a more of a seasonal thing so we try to get the, the paperwork side of things done between September and February with a little bit of practical and preparation work and then the main body of, of plant maintenance comes in in the spring and the summer months. So there's just a few of those optional units there as to which ones we do will depend on um, what facilities, resources and materials we've got and whether we've got any ongoing projects on site. So that will be decided generally to before you start as to when it, which units you will do. So there's the four mandatory ones and then there'll be an additional 14 optional ones for the diploma. Now that might sound like a lot of units but bear in mind only four of those has any written work attached to them. The rest of them are all uh, just hands-on practicals only. Okay, just to show you what you need to do, although it's practical, you have to achieve certain criteria within that. So I've just put up a selection there of um, that one is to do with ground cultivation. So that criteria there is taken directly from the uh, qualification handbook. And you have to demonstrate each of those criteria so that you can select the correct tool, that you identify what needs to be done, that you can remove the weeds properly, cultivate the soil to the right depth, and so on and so on. The way that's delivered is we'll go outside and do a practical. It may take you two or three weeks to become what we call competent at it, uh, and then we will give you a skills-based assessment on your performance. So generally, it's over a period of time. So it's not just a case of, oh, we're doing weed weeding today and that's it you would do it over an extended period of time to improve the rate at which you do it and also the quality at which you do it as well. Okay. Um, the second qualification, and again, is still the practical hot skills at level two, but here the written work it moves up a level. And if you're going to go straight from to level two from, from school, then we would need good study skills, um, good GCSE grades to be able to cope with the additional written work that we have there as well. So the structure is slightly different. There are only 12 units, but each of those units is a little more involved. And every one of those units has a, uh, an amount of paperwork attached to them. But rather than being short answer questions, they may well be a little bit more involved. So although you be in the same classroom as somebody doing level one, what you have to do develop from the classroom work is a bit more detailed. So those are currently the ones that we use for the Prakot skills level two. So as you can see, ground preparation is common. In fact, all those, those tasks there will be common to both level one and two. It's just the degree of difficulty and the number of tasks within each one 
becomes more involved as we go through. So we've got uh, planting outdoors, again, caring for plants outdoors, recognition and control of pests and diseases, application of different types of fertilizers, the use of petrol hedge trimmers and also uh, petrol lawn mowers, um, the actual production of a planting plan. So we're currently undergoing some redevelopment on the college site and we'll get the students involved in coming up with the plans, planting plans for certain areas. So that it all, it's, it's all knits in together as one big project. Um, in addition, you will also study plant selection and then plant identification. So the use of um, common names, but also botanical names as well. Uh, and that is done all the way through the year. So you have certain plants at certain times of the year will be more identifiable depending on what they are, whether it's a tree or a shrub or what, perennials. The third option is the work-based horticulture, Diploma Level 2. This is also available as an apprentice route as well, uh, where the attendance is slightly different. If you're a, as a college-based student, all three programmes are based around two days a week attendance. Um, obviously with the apprentice, it's slightly different. It's you're only in college for one day, but that's compensated by the fact that you're on your placement for four days. So the topics are all very similar to the Prakort skills, but the amount of academic work significantly is higher than, than the practical art skills qualifications. But again, you'd still be in the same class studying the same topics, but the amount of work you need to produce for the work-based is much more in depth. You'd need to produce uh, profiles on pests, profiles on diseases. You'd need to be able to uh, de de demonstrate your own planning skills for drawing plans and designs and costing up materials and getting in touch with supplies and being able to work out not just how to plant an area but the, all the planning behind it and everything else. So they will come in into there and again the number of modules goes down because each individual module is more advanced than the practical art skills. So those are the current, um, uh, there's 10 modules there um, Health and safety practices, where again, we look at risk assessments and the use of PPE. Developing your personal performance in terms of uh, being able to self-assess as well as improve over a period of time. Ground preparation and planting, which is common to everything, as is maintaining plants outdoors, removing unwanted plant growth, such as weeds or pruning out dead stems. The use of handheld machines and uh, tools and identifying plants and the emphasis with the work base is that it's by Latin only. So it's, it is where you would also need to have good study skills to be able to work using the Latin names as well. Um, in terms of where the work takes place, generally across both campuses, uh, i.e. at the town centre campus and also the technology campus, where most of our turf maintenance takes place. Uh, I'm not aware, or we haven't done it at, at the moment, we haven't done any work at Knowsley, um, but obviously if we get enough numbers from Knowsley, then that may, be, that may be revisited at a later date. But currently the horticultural courses uh, that are college-based will run at the St. Helens campus. All the machinery that you use is of a good industry standard, um, maintained by our technicians. Um, and there's sufficient stuff for you to actually use. And then we've got some examples here for you to have a look at. There's some at the top left there using a jet wash. Um, we've got um, actually an apprentice there using one of the rotavators on the town centre campus. Um, we've also got this ground preparation going on there. The use of a lawnmower, uh, line marking and sports pitches. Um, and also, again, on the picture on the right there, people doing general maintenance on the beds and borders around the college. We do also have some off-site groups as well. Um, whether you, if you're college-based, you may occasionally get to, to work with those groups on off-site projects. Uh, but again, the work that is done is very similar. Going up. Uh, project there on the left we did a, a with a collaboration with um, a an environmental group and we went out and did some tree planting that was last year 
Um, so there is a variety of tasks and practicals we do. We also work in one of the parks. One of my colleagues there was doing the, as you can see there, the spring bedding. These are bedding plants planted in the springtime. We've got some planted areas on site where we do that sort of thing. But again, there may be opportunities to go off site as well. Um, and again, there we go. So these are actually working in an actual public park based in Warrington, but the students are actually bussed up by the college minibus and then brought back to college. So the starting point would always be um, uh, the college as a base and then move on to for wherever you're going on that particular day and time. Um, Suzanne's already mentioned about the work experience. Um, we go for a few more hours. We're looking, if you can get a work experience, we're looking to, to go up to 100 hours during the full year. Um, Generally, I can also be done one day a week or in blocks during the holiday periods. It would be beneficial to anybody who's looking to join the horticulture to do some preliminary work uh, into, into the kind of placement that they want. Maybe make some contacts that will show uh, some enthusiasm towards an employer. We have got some placements, but if, if you leave it to us to organize your placement, you could be placed anywhere within the area. So if you're looking to somewhere where you can get to easily, then if you go and look for your own placements, which sets you in, in good stead, then that's a good uh, starting point. So you can go to a landscaper or a garden center or a tree surgeon or any sort of what takes your fancy um, rather than waiting for us to set one up for you as well. So, um, so that's the work placements. When we do start the course, we have got sufficient materials for all, but we do say that the three pieces of equipment there, you need to supply these yourself. It's not something that we want to share, especially with the current climate of COVID-19, in that we, you need to get your own set of safety boots or safety shoes. So they must have a steel toe cap in them. You need to supply your own gloves, gardening gloves, whether it be canvas ones or um, knitted ones, uh, well knitted like a material uh, plastic over the top, as long as they're suitable for outdoor use. And also for the amount of work you're doing outside, you'd also need a good pair of secateurs. Um, again, there may be assistance with this in the bursary um, to apply for some of this. But again, the boots and the gloves uh, are any practical task outdoors or even indoors as well you're going to need the boots and the gloves before you start the course. Okay, um, English and Maths, who's already, Suzanne's already mentioned. Um, it's been mandatory. Generally, we try to fit it around the horticulture timetable. But again, it may well be that with the English and Maths and the two days horticulture, you could find yourself in college probably on, on four days uh, at different times of the week, depending on what they are. Um, tutorials, Suzanne has already mentioned that as well. Generally, the tutorials are tagged on to the end of one of your programme days and you be, may well be mixed with the floristry students if you do floristry and horticulture mixed together. Uh, and that's it. Any questions? Okay, um, great. I can see a couple of questions have come through um, for Rob. First of all, we've been asked, when you complete your level one, do you go on to your level two straight away? Uh, not, within the same, not within the same year, no. You can only do one per academic year. So if you start in level one in September, your level two would start the following September. Okay, and does completion of level one, I'm, I'm thinking behind the question here, does completion of level one automatically get you to level two? Yes, yes, you, yes. If you've done, if you complete level one in the first year, you're automatically entitled to go straight on to level two, yeah. Okay, and then another question has come through, um, again for yourself, Rob, um, and a student has said here, he's already got, he already has his placement, he's helping them out now. Right. He's, had, he's had his interview. He's coming with his mum for his interview um, as he has additional needs. So right. suppose he's just letting you know he's, he's keen. Right, good, good. If you've, got, if you've got the placement already set up, that saves a lot of messing about as well. Once we start in the college, um, uh, with the college academy, when we do start, 
I can, I'll need the details of the placement because we will have to do our own health and safety check before we can uh, sign off any students attending. So uh, that's usually a formality as long as they've got uh, public liability insurance, but we would have to do a separate health and safety check before he starts officially with that placement once he's an enrolled student. So. Okay, good answer there. Um, I'm just going to give a minute for attendees if they want to give any additional information here. As I say, we've had a couple of questions come through. Let me just see if there's another one. All right, okay. The, the placement is Wonky Gardens in, Wis in Witness. Right, okay. I don't know if you know Wonky Gardens. Oh, no, it sounds a good name, though. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? Yeah. Sounds, it sounds like it needs unwonking, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. um, okay, so I, I realise some more questions may come through, but as Suzanne and myself have already put our email addresses in the chat facility, would you like to do that as well, Rob? Yeah, certainly, yeah. yeah. Just yeah. in case any more questions come through um, from students sort of once the webinar is finished. Okay, let me just see if there's any more here. Okay, so do you have anything you want to add, Suzanne? Um, no, no, I think that's it. Okay, you're okay. Only, actually, the only thing, if anybody wants floristry, um, it may not run for the study programme at Knowles, they may have to attend St Helens to do that, only due to numbers at the moment for Knowlesley. Okay, so if you are uh, perhaps if you had applied to Nosley and were hoping to apply at Nosley, yeah. please still do. And there's the chance that it, it will run. It's just yeah. numbers dependent. But yeah. if not, it will run at St. Helens. Is that is that right? That was right. Yeah, it's only part-time courses at Nosley at the moment. So like one day a week is so. Um, all right. Okay. For some reason, um, the student can't see your email address. So, um, Rob, would you mind, yeah, is there your email address that you'd like? There's all panellists and attendees, so if we re-type uh, we re that, it should come up now. Hold on. Okay. And perhaps if you just want to spell it out as well. Yeah, it's R. Hogan, all lowercase, R-H-O-G-A-N, at St. Helens dot ac dot uk okay that's great okay can you uh, can you see that the attendee is interested in that information just let us know yep he's got that <laughs> it's a little drop down box at the bottom it says panelists or attendees or both so. that's it <laughs> Okay, that's great. Well, I'm going to end the webinar now, um, unless there's, I'll just give you a sort of 10 more seconds. But in the meantime, um, as I know sport need this channel in 10 minutes, <laughs> um, I'll thank you uh, attendees and thank you panellists for attending. Um, this will be released as a webinar um, sort of electronically once it's been digitally altered and what have you. So if you, there's any questions or you want to revisit the presentation, you will be able to. Okay, thanks again, and I'll sign off for now. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.